Hi, Killian here. Today I'd like to talk about how to write a script. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the creative process of writing a script because I'm not going to tell you how you can find good ideas and good stories, mostly because I have no idea how to do it myself. No, uh, I first want to talk about how to format a script. You know, how do you write a script to indicate this is dialogue and this is character A, here's character B, um, this is a scene description, camera direction, all the stuff that goes into a script. Now, many of you might never have seen one, which is kind of lazy because you could just Google it. Uh, there are lots of sample scripts of actual movies in PDF format you can download. Uh, but, you know, to spare you that work, uh, you can just check out what a script looks like here. So, first of all, on the first page you usually have an episode title and the name of the writer. Some add addresses if you need to contact somebody or phone numbers and often also a, a date for the first draft. After that, normally you get something like Act 1. This one says teaser because often uh, before the Act 1, many series have a teaser. You know, that short scene, it goes right in the middle of the action, just before the intro. Next thing you see is the scene logline, which kind of says, where is, is this external, internal? So do you have to go on location and can you shoot this in the studio? And then it says what location it is, and it also will usually always say whether it's day or night. Of course, for science fiction stories, most of the time you're in space, so it's neither day nor light, so you can just leave that part out. Once the whole script is done, you start numbering every scene, because then you can start making a shooting list based on this, actually. Do you have all the locations, and you can check out, okay, which locations do I not have backgrounds for, which I have to draw. You can check out do they use any kind of props or, or any things that the characters are holding that I would have to add to the character rig. Dialogue is, uh, is indented heavily here, so you have the character in uppercase letters and then the in, in dialogue indented very heavily, and the second character here, and it goes on like this. And descriptive text or any kind of action that goes on to describe is just, it's just um, no indent full line width and that's it. That's mostly it. So that's the whole magic to a script. Sounds boring, but actually does the job. And now you might ask yourself, what year is this? You know, it looks like a typewriter. I mean, This is archaic. Why the hell would I, in the 21st century, in the year 2021, use a format like that? And there's a very simple reason for that. Actually, it turns out that with this format, if you use this specific font and a specific font size and the indents and all of that, you get roughly one page per minute of film. So it's a very good, um, it's a very good guideline for you when you write the script, as long as you keep your eye in the, in the software on the page counter, uh, how good your pacing is. You know, you write the best script you've ever written, it just, just turns out it's, it's too long. It's not going to fit in 20 minutes. Maybe you just wrote a script for a two hour movie. Good for you. But then having to cut that down and throw out all the, all the fantastic dialogue you've written, it's also a pain in the ass. So it is good to know that, okay, with this script format, I can just keep on writing and I know, okay, I got to put this part in five pages and this part in four pages and this part in one page, roughly. And you can get all the pieces together while you write it. Because me too, I am not a very structured writer. I do, when I start writing, I have a few beats, I think they call them, and write a rough outline of, of what's going to happen. And But after that, I start often just writing dialogue right away. So a little bit of scene description, boom, dialogue, dialogue, dialogue. I don't know why, that's just a how, the, how I work. But uh, it helps me to have that page counter and just to know how many minutes I've, of, of actual movie I've written already. 
When it comes to structure now, um, there are different schools of thought. Uh, one of the most common structure people use is the so-called um, Freitag Pyramid. It's named after Gustav Freitag, a German guy, and uh, he wrote a book. He wrote the book on writing dramas, actually. Uh, he was analyzing Shakespeare's um, dramas and lots of other dramas and found that they all essentially have a five-act structure. And in within that structure, there is this kind of arc, this character arc or this, this tension arc. It looks like a triangle, and so they call it the Freitag Pyramid. Now, I've also read a lot that TV, most TV formats actually use a five-act structure. But funny enough, all the scripts I have been able to download for animated TV series, like uh, I've downloaded scripts from Rick and Morty. There are scripts you can download for Family Guy. And there was some other one I forgot. And all of them use a three-act structure. So I just think your mileage may vary. And the important, important part is that, that for one thing, viewers kind of expect this kind of character arc. Now, if you, if you cut that up into five pieces or three pieces, I don't think it's that essential. The idea is that the development of the character within that very short 20 minute episode follows that arc in some form or another. Uh, let's have a look at the Freitag Pyramid and what it actually says about the structure of a script. I'm going to explain Freitag's Pyramid by example of Fungus and Mold's pilot episode. Um, be warned, this is a chart full of spoilers. So if you haven't watched the pilot episode Dead Angle yet, I highly recommend you do so right now. Go ahead, I can wait. You can pause the video here, I'll be around when you come back. Uh, and if you don't know where to watch it, you can either go to fungusandmold.com, which is my Vimeo, uh, on demand page where you'd have to purchase the episode for I think two dollars and fifty or if you don't feel like directly paying for it only indirectly that is you can go and watch it on Amazon Prime okay see you in a second okay have you seen it you good okay let's go fight experiment first point in the whole chain of actions is the exposition this is where you get to know the protagonists and their normal daily life. So you, you understand what world are we in and how do they lead their lives. In our case, it's just fungus. And his daily life is basically him slacking off, living an easy life at his bar. You know, he's sighing. He's like, ah, oh, nothing to do. Life is good. Life is easy. Next point is the initial or the inciting incident. This is uh, something that happens that changes the protagonist's life forever or that kicks off the whole action afterwards. In our case this is of course Mold's escape pod crashing in front of the infinity bar. Then we get to a rising action so things start getting exciting now. The first thing that happens is that news mentions that Mold has probably assassinated the Emperor. So the arm tension rises, right? The next thing that happens is Fungus calls the ultraviolet guard tries to resolve the whole thing so things getting better he's like oh I, this guy is dangerous so i gotta save myself but things get complicated and the ultraviolet guard basically attacks the whole bar with him inside next point would be them escaping with fungus ship that is kind of an uprising movement because it's positive they escape they get away although fungus bar is destroyed and the ship is also heavily damaged and then we have the climax, and that is a bit hard to understand because it's not normally the, you know, the showdown. That is not the climax. The climax is the emotional climax, or the where things start looking really good and seem to going quite well. Actually, that is the climax. And in our case, is where they get away, they manage to flee to a space station where they are safe for now. They purchase a vintage ship or a new new ship, so they can finally. Uh, flee to safety with this ship. The ship itself will be, play a central role in the future episodes and its engine. So you get introduced to the new ship and you hear a little bit about the shady past of the ship and the weird ghost story and the mysterious engine. So this is uh, also a bit of a forebear of things to come in the future. Now we go with a falling action. That means things now start to go really bad. 
Next thing that happens is Mold proves his innocence, which is good, but by destroying Alice. He shoots at Alice, Alice, boom, is gone, and Fungus is just shattered. He's like, why are you insane? Next thing is they try to repair Alice, but that goes really bad because they reset the firmware and Alice attacks them, and they don't seem to be able to, f to fight him off. So things are going worse. And in the middle of fleeing from Alice, the ultraviolet guard catch up with them, they breach the ship's hull, they hunt them down, um, they have no way out. They are caught in the air duct, what they're gonna do. And then there comes the next step, which is the resolution, the absolute down point also. Fungus and mold, they surrender, so you'd think everything is lost, but it turns out it's all about a ticket for a misdemeanor because shooting the emperor is no big deal because he can be recloned, of course. This is a resolution. So there are some loose ends still here. So you wonder, so what about this engine and this spaceship? I mean, they made a bit of a deal about it, but I haven't heard about it. The other thing is, okay, these two protagonists that had a hard time getting together and they don't really get along that well yet, but somehow they seem to be okay with each other. What is going to happen with them? So we have the denouement, which is kind of the untying of loose ends. And here we learn that, okay, the two protagonists for now, they seem to part ways, but in a friendly manner. So basically Mold asks for a, for a lift to another place where he wants to go and Fungus say, okay, and they're joking about it. So they seem to be po positive and friendly. And the mysterious ship and its engine gets a bit of a cliffhanger. So, you know, there will be more about this engine and this weird ship. This is how it works, basically. It's actually kind of funny because uh, Fright Experiment mentions three points along the rising and fall in action. And I didn't consciously build those three points in. I just looked at my story and found, oh, actually, there are three points by pure happenstance. Probably it's so ingrained in us that this is the normal story structure that you just end up doing it this way. So when it comes down to software for writing a script, of course you could use any word processor, but it would be a pain in the butt to format this all manually, almost as bad as using a typewriter. The industry standard for writing scripts is actually Final Draft, a software that is very capable and has all kinds of bells and whistles and lets you do all kinds of crazy things and collaborate with other writers and God knows what, and it also costs your arm and the leg. You do not need it. Um, because, as you have seen, the output format is so primitive that even a mechanical typewriter could create it. So I'm not telling you to go out and buy old used typewriters, although that would be really vintage and super cool. No, um, there is other software and there's another nice format for script writing that is really, really cool. I'm not sure if you ever have heard of Markdown Format, which is basically plain text, not just vanilla text, nothing fancy, that, that has a kind of formatting that you can read in plain text format as a human being. Um, so like to mark out, this is a this is an, um, level one headline, a level two headline, uh, this is bold and so on. But that kind of formatting is not only human readable, it can also be interpreted by software to displayed in a bit more sexy format, you know, with actual bold fonts or with actual larger type and whatever. And so somebody saw like, oh, wow, this is awesome. So couldn't we modify this and use this for script writing? Because script writing too isn't very fancy in its formatting. And as long as, as a software can recognize certain typical elements that indicate certain types of formatting within a script, we should be cool. And so somebody came up with a fountain format, which is basically almost the same as Markdown, just that it interprets a few more things a bit differently because it's very specific for script writing. So what you do then, if you have, a, if you have an application that supports the fountain format, is that you can just, um, you can just write and you don't have to worry about the formatting. So if you do things like write a, all uppercase name, one word, it'll recognize, oh, this is, this is a character name, this is di dialogue, and it whoosh, indents it automatically. You hit, you hit return, and then the following text block will be indented because it's dialogue. And if you have another two returns, it'll go back to the, to the full width because then there's a new chapter, new paragraph with a scene description, and it's super straightforward. Most of the software that supports 
fountain is very affordable, maybe 20 bucks or so for the Mac version and often free or two or four or 10 bucks maximum for the iOS version. And I personally use Slugline, which is a very capable uh, editor, which uh, has versions of for iOS, for the iPad uh, and for Mac as well. So this is Slugline on the iPhone here. And uh, I keep all my scripts on iCloud. So if I select iCloud, I see all the scripts that are in my iCloud folder for Slugline. I'm going to open episode one here. And as you can see, the formatting is basically same font, same look as if I was looking at it uh, on my Mac. And you can do the normal editing here as well. And you get the automated formatting, everything, um, just as if you were on a Mac. And you can do a preview, which then will create a PDF which is of course a little bit small to read on the iPhone, but you can export this as a normal PDF, uh, as a normal script. And you could, I could print this with if I had bonjour printing or something like that. If you can't bother to learn the intricacies of uh, script writing, editing, you can just get the app called Untitled. It's uh, about five bucks. They have only iOS versions, so you have to write your script either on the iPhone, God forbid, uh, or on an iPad. But the cool thing is, what it can do is super mega auto formatting. It's almost like mind reading. So you could just write something like this. They're inside of a log cabin during the day. Little Red's grandmother will be in bed. Her cap should be pulled over her face, but it's obvious what, that it's a wolf. Little Red. Oh, grandmother, what big ears you have, blah, blah, blah. Now, if you enter this into Untitled, it'll recognize through keywords and formatting exactly what you are trying to put together here, and the preview will then look like this. Boom. You get your log line, you get your scene description, and here is your, your dialogue formatting. So this is auto-formatting on steroids. I think it's a great app. That's an alternative to write your script, especially if you're not experienced and it doesn't cost much. And there is another software called Logline, which is also quite capable, but doesn't have a iOS counterpart, which is no big deal. I mean, you can get any, you could even use any markdown editor, basically, if you don't mind the formatting being slightly off. You can still write the script there. Just if you want to display it, you need a fountain compatible uh, editor. Now, once you've written your script, um, narration is, of course, one thing you have to do with a script. That will be a future episode. I'll talk about how I do my narration and voice work. Uh, but in the next episode, I actually want to talk a little bit about how to design for animation and some of the caveats and uh, pitfalls I have encountered with uh, producing my first episode, which took me forever because I had to just redo half of it after a while. Straighten the fucking merchandise so people can see what I'm wearing here. This is what a screen look like. What a screenplay looks like. What the fuck? So Markdown has turned this into something human believable. The fuck? So the idea is something like HTML, but what the fuck? It's amazing if I still know how to use these things. It's so long ago now. Oh, hello, Ferio. Ferio. Ferio? What did you say? Fuck this. Let's do this again. Okay. Science fiction telenovela. What the f. <laughs> Let's try this again. Hello, chum. The lighting is really shitty and I have a really big shadow on my face, so let's just do this again. Two travelers and spice. Spice? Oh, it's about June. Hello, old chum. I have finally obstructed my face with this paper. Idea of a kind of. Uh, of what, I don't know. <laughs>